Uh, welcome, um, everybody. Hope you're having a good uh, conference so far. Um, since this is live, I'm you know I'm happy to do kind of uh, live feedback with people. So I'll I'm there's a in the Discord. There's the welcome to uh, this little piggy. How I learned to relax and refine my specs channel. So if you have any questions, I'll kind of peek up and see if I can answer those in real time. Um, otherwise, yeah, uh, let's begin. So my, uh, I'm really happy Oliver, uh, the, the talk before me covered a lot of introductions to REPL stuff, so I don't have to, this isn't scary to anyone of this entire talk just being the REPL. So uh, for the meantime, I'm just gonna kind of riff off, you know, some stuff I've prepared before and the kind of uh, central problems that I, that I at least want to, cover um here tonight so yeah so what was the title of my talk i'm forgetting already so let me just oh that's wrong let me just see what the title is okay yes it's this little piggy or how i learned to relax and refine my spec um i'm using some terminology here that i'll explain later um but yeah i could also introduce myself i guess so I'm Santi. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, and a little about me, as Renzo mentioned, um, uh, you know, we work together. Uh, we work together at a place uh, called Dwa. Well, actually, I'm a software developer, and my employer is Dwa. Um, you know, we're hiring, so um, feel free to reach out or go to a website to talk more. I'm also an, uh, an alum of the Recur Center. Uh, it's a self-directed retreat uh, in New York, but in, in the last few months has uh, gone virtual. So open to anyone worldwide. And a lot of the initial work I did on Piggy, um, I did there. So I thought it'd be nice to mention those folks. So, you know, I, uh, as Renzo hinted at, you know, I want to talk kind of about closure spec and kind of how it um, really has affected how um, how I end up developing software closure. It was uh, when I joined, when I like started to learn closure, it was around the 1.9 release when closure spec was introduced. And the kind of things that was showing up really like caught my imagination. Um, so if you're not aware of closure spec, it does a lot of things. Um, I have uh, some list. Um, it does validation, it does parsing, instrumentation, can provide some documentation, has um, given us uh, new ways to interact with error messages. And particularly I'm interested in is uh, automa automatic generative testing. Um, so we're, the crux of the stock will mainly focus on that. Um, so a lot of, I think the magic of, for me at least, development closure uh, or development with spec is I could start to uh, draw the shapes around my data structures and whatnot. Um, I gave an introduction to Piggy uh, around this time last year and that talk mo mainly focused on how, to, how it, uh, how Piggy provides specs for break and changes, and it, uh, but it hand waves kind of the important part of uh, generation. How, how do you end up generating these specs for your functions that um, allow you to um, valid, uh, have a bunch of uh, uh, valid inputs and outputs that could test uh, in a very thorough way uh, breaking changes. Um, so in this this talk, I want to kind of delve deeper into like that half, you know, of the of the equation. Um, so if you never use uh, closure spec before, um, it's mainly around predicates. Um, you could write a spec for let's say an integer. Um, it'll give you this. Uh, this kind of opaque object, but we could ask for its form back. 
um, and see what we wrote. Um, cool. So that's what uh, that's what it initially looked like. But we could also validate um, validate against specs. Um, so I could say ten is an int, and I could say Santi is not an int. Um, but the coolest part to me is uh, how you exercise functions. Um, I think this should work. Um, for the record, I am running on a branch of spec called spec alpha two, not because it's particularly any better. It's just that uh, to develop the uh, break and changes, the thing I wanted to show off was it could find break and changes across spec one and spec two. And I just forgot to switch back to an old branch before I developed a bunch of these features. Um, so, um, so this is the re in spec one, you wouldn't need to wrap that, but in spec two, there's a difference between symbolic specs and the kind of opaque spec object that I showed earlier. Um, so the cool part is here we could, uh, generate a bunch of valid values that conform to this, uh, predicate. Um, and this works for other things. If I just wanted positive integers, I could do that too. If I wanted negative, oh, I believe this is the predicate. Yeah, negative would do that. Uh, I could use other predicates. Let's say I just, I'm interested in vectors. Awesome. Um, so this is great. The problem, um, I guess, starts to happen when you move outside of the kind of core functionality. Um, so if I, you know, write my own spec, uh, say yes, oops. Uh, ex what's the word I want? Exercise. Um, what did I want to do? Uh, let's just say it's a function. I want to. Uh, you know, if it, yeah, I guess some, I know the predicate is greater than five, right? I want to exercise that. I get errors because there's no, um, there's no built in spec for this. And, you know, you learn that through practice that um, there is a limit to how much the generators can infer. Um, so this is a, this is a problem. Um, oops. Oops. Uh, so this is a problem. So what do people end up doing? Well, a lot of the time, the advice is to uh, wrap it in something called uh, S uh, SN, which is a combinator. It takes one spec and um, uh, kind of like left to right, kind of flows those values through. And um, as long as like they all uh, are true, the, the entire spec would be true. So I could start it, uh, I could start off, give it a generator that I know works, int, and then pass it this, um, this, uh, the predicate, the arbitrary predicate I gave it before. Um, so that gives me a spec object. Um, I'll exercise this. And cool. So I get a bunch of things over five. That's great. Um, but what if uh, I want more uh, specific kind of functions? Like th this works well because underneath the hood, it's doing uh, something called like such that, which is a, a combinator in the test check library, which um, uh, it takes every generator and just filters out all the things that, uh, oh, filters all the things that uh, are truthy for it. So um, it just has a bunch of generators and it finds out all the valid things. So if I had a very specific one, like, I don't know, equals five, um, I would probably get, you might run into this error. You probably will run into this error. Like couldn't satisfy such that predicate after about a hundred tries. Um, so can we do better? Um, maybe. Um, Similarly, uh, if you wanted to do like regular expressions or like uh, if I know, what do you call this? Um, I'll, I'll move off that. So 
what I wanted to introduce is um, you have to find the right spec um, is a kind of interactive process that um, I think is really suited for kind of solvent at the REPL, um, but we just don't have the tools for it. Um, you sort of end up needing to know like the domain knowledge in a way that, you know, I need to, um, you know, refine this generate, uh, refine this generator such that um, this predicate will be satisfied. Uh, but similarly, if, uh, so that, that's, one, that's one big problem I think a lot of people run into. But also when you're trying to find the right spec, um, sometimes you have to also worry about over-specifying because in trying to generate or you know, get this kind of, uh, this, uh, I'm blanking on the word, but you know, the, the joy of like seeing values and like poking at them in a lot of ways, like seeing is believing, but seeing can also be uh, deceiving in a way that um, if I, you know, if I ask you what kind, if, if, if we're writing a spec for the map function, right? Oops, map, right? Usually you say you map over you take a function and you map over some collection in like the very simplest case, right? Uh, what predicate would you put here for function? Fn, does Fn sound good? What do people think? Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty good. You'll definitely find, uh, definitely capture a good chunk of what you want, but um, what if a common thing is, um, you know, you have a collection of maps, uh, name, Santi, uh, name, Renzo. You have a collection of maps, but you just want to use the, a keyword. A keyword implements, um, the IFN interface, which allows it to be used like a, a function. Um, and that, that works. But if we, if we asked his name a function, it would be false, right? So the right predicate here would be uh, IFN. Um, and that's, at that point, you're sort of like knowing some uh, closure internals, uh, which maybe are useful. Similarly, Sets would all uh, you could you know, you could map over with a set right um, you know to check for predicate truthiness. Uh, so finding the right spec sort of is like difficult without the tooling. You know you have to read a lot of uh, read a lot of the for me at least I had to read a lot of blog posts to get to it. So the thing I wanted to introduce is um, this process I'm calling whittling or whittle rather. So to look back at the title, um, oops, let's look back at the title. Um, that's the kind of pun I put there. Uh, why, why the whittle term? So I think, you know, a lot of people know the term in, in, uh, in the sense that, you know, you whittle down something, right? Uh, uh, you whittle down the definition, you know, you shape or form by pairing or cutting, you know, yada, yada, you know, uh, yawn, I'm not, not really interested in it. Oh, I spelled yawn wrong. Oh, well, um, oops. So there's that, um, you know, it's not a closure talk without, you know, bring out some definitions. So actually, I also looked at a 1913 edition of the Webster's Dictionary. Um, it turns out there's another definition, um, you know, to edge, to sharpen, to render eager or excited, especially to excite with liquor, to inebriate. And so this kind of caught my interest because um, in Rishiki's talk about uh, 
breaking changes, uh, I believe the talk was uh, speculation, he described the process of relaxing uh, a spec or a predicate, you know, relaxing constraints uh, to make them more general. And this is the process of going from that FN to the IFN thing um, I, uh, I mentioned earlier. Um, so in a, in a sense, you know, whittling can also be relaxing. Um, uh, and so, you know, uh, I, to, you know, to not confuse it with the common usage of whittling down, um, I call this whittling up. And for this reason, you know, uh, I developed a, a bunch of functions around um, this abstract process I've been describing. Um, so, uh, I ha how do I get that? Let's see. NS aliases. So yeah, I have a whittle namespace, uh, piggy dot alpha dot whittle, um, and I define you know a, a few functions as whittle up, which does what we said here. Um, it has, uh, and I could ask the question of it, right? Uh, I want ifn. What's it's if I want will up, what I would get, I would get IFN. That's great. Um, similarly, if I want to whittle down IFN, I'd see actually IFN does a bunch of the things I mentioned. Um, maps are can be used as functions, function can be used as function sets. Um, so, oh, I, I, I'm missing keywords, so I guess I had to fix that implementation. Um, so, there's that. Behind the scenes, um, I'm using some functionality I developed around registering, uh, register, mm, register, register, yeah. registering um, whittles in a hierarchy or a, a registry, really, where you can um, take an arbitrary, you know, a predicate or a fully qualified predicate, a uh, fully qualified symbol, or uh, keyword as in like closure specs and define these parent child relationships um, out of that. So, in the kind of cases we saw earlier, you know, uh, we would say FN is um, oops, IFN. Um, I'm doing that kind of, and FN is a IFN. Uh, so, what does this get us? You know, why would you bother, you know, doing this additional thing, this other registry, you know, you're already dealing with specs. Um, yeah, so the reason I wanted to do this was uh, to kind of have something separate from specs, you know, specs are doing like a lot of things uh, as, I, I, as I showed her, oops, that's not it. Uh, a lot of things, oh, lots of things, sorry, I forget the bar I used. Oh, lots. Cool. It does uh, quite a few things. And when you're doing an SDEF, um, you know, you're, you want to get as much as you can out of it without doing much work. But when, as you saw, things can get, you know, complex pretty quickly. And uh, I wanted a tool where I could at least reason about uh, these kind of things uh, programmatically at the REPL, you know, sort of, uh, you know, it's a lot of good work, I think, is done away from the computer. But when I'm at the computer, you know, I want the most, the most power I can get. Um, so, um, so, so, okay, so why, you know, why do we want to do this? Um, uh, One thing I think um, is really valuable is if you, you know, if we, I think I show this ex exercise. If you try to exercise um, FN earlier, right? Um, we get we get a lot of problems. We can't even see the kind of thing we're working with. You know, I think a lot. The benefit of like exercise is you get a lot of examples really quickly. Um, you know, same thing with IFN. Um, but 
I implemented this function called Whittle Registry, and I could pass it. Um, you could so exercise um, has a few arities. You could you know give it a spec and you know, generate, and you could give it an n you know generate that number of things, um, and you can also give it um, overrides. You know, registry targets um, these overrides, which is similar to overrides in um, uh, the test check functions. Uh, so here I could turn overrides um, and I'll use the exercise style. Um, uh, exercise style and I'll use and I'll turn on children, which means it'll use all the generators if, you, if uh, any of its children have generators, so maps have generators built in, sets have generators built in, it could use that to generate instead. So, oops, I cannot think. Oops, oh. Well, this is what I get for poking at it before this call. Um, but yeah, the idea is um, you're defining all these uh, relationships, uh, you know, you could see the kind of maps built in. Oops. Um, you're defining all these relationships anyway. Um, so you want to get the most out of it. Uh, you know, uh, let's see, what's the last part? Uh, the way, uh, so this does simply for, uh, this is nice for a few things. Uh, there's also facilities in Whittle, uh, Reg, to, um, let's say if I define some spec and I want to say it's an integer, it's an integer spec, I could give it a uh, uh, options map where I could pass it uh, combinators from test check. So F map is a nice one. And I could just simply pass it a function that takes um, a value from the int generator and uh, produces uh, and uh, it will return like a new generator. So in the case here, I could, you know, make a, I guess, strings, uh, string of X. And then if I want to uh, test gen, or I could get gen, whittle slash get gen of some spec. And then I want to sample, I think. S sample some spec. Um, I would be able to generate some things. Uh, I'm running a bit on time, but uh, hopefully uh, it shows how wor much work in progress this library is, and I'm looking forward to continuing on working with, on it um, and development further, uh, especially kind of the ideas um, I talked about here, hopefully will be helpful to people who are, I guess, who might be struggling with taking, uh, you know, their closure specs and making their own generators. I think a big success for this, for my library, I think would be if it's a gateway drug to use in uh, test check uh, more. So um, I believe that's my time. So, you know, thanks. Uh, thanks to the organizers of Reclosure and hope everyone has a great rest of the conference.